Welcome to the Anderson Center. My name is Stephanie and today I am talking with sculptor Alonso Sierralta about his new sculpture hold which was just installed in our sculpture garden. Alonso grew up in Valparaiso, Chile and has an MFA from the University of Nebraska and now lives in Northeast Minneapolis where he teaches art in Spanish. Alonso, tell me a little bit about your process and how the sculpture came together. The process uh, behind this specific piece was a way to glorify this, uh, this particular branch. Um, I wanted to elevate it uh, both figuratively and, and uh, physically, symbolically. And um, as you mentioned, the, the majority of my work um, revolves around combining natural and manufacturer elements. Uh, I think this one is no exception here. We have uh, a very natural uh, piece uh, suspended uh, with metal. Uh, the entire structure revolves around a way to maintain and suspend the branch. Um, and so I thought of uh, utilizing uh, metal uh, in a very minimal way to suspend it so it, it to make it look like it was almost uh, invisible. From a distance, you can see that a little more effectively. The title hold uh, was very intriguing to me because um, uh, it could be both utilized in a positive, but also in a uh, somewhat negative way. You can hold something dear, you can hold something uh, close to your heart, but you can also hold something captive. Um, so depending on your personal experience and your background, um, the, the title of the piece can resonate a, a variety of uh, emotions and uh, experiences. Then we created this uh, shelter um, to hopefully keep the elements uh, out, of, out of this branch. So we'll see how long it lasts. And you've talked some about how there are ideas of migration um, in your work. How does that show up in this piece? The uh, idea of migration has always um, been part of my work. Um, I like to think that uh, some of the pieces that I make deal directly with my personal experience as an immigrant. Uh, at the time, when I was finalizing the way it was going to be held, there was uh, a lot of turmoil in the southern part of the United States, uh, holding children captive. And that sort of triggered this, this idea of containing something, uh, not just glorifying it as you see here, but also containing it, holding it captive. Um, and so there was, uh, at the time, there was a clear connection between what was happening in the United States and the, uh, the visual development of this piece. When did you know that you wanted to be an artist? That is a very good question. Um, and uh, the short answer is um, always. <laughs> um, I'm a very lucky individual because I've always uh, known what I, what I wanted to do with my life. Uh, I had a very supportive family and uh, the, uh, you know, the fact that I wanted to pursue the visual arts was, um, uh, I wouldn't say it was encouraged. I, I wouldn't say it was discouraged. It was, uh, it was more of a matter of fact uh, profession that I was going to pursue. Uh, the, the Latin American model is, is very similar to the uh, European model as far as uh, being a visual artist is a profession. Um, I often use the word uh, workshop in Spanish, uh, taller, which means workshop. It's not necessarily a studio. Studio has a tendency of becoming this, you know, this uh, the elevated, um, you know, um, term that it's not really um, solidified the way it is in, in Spanish. You know, taller means workshop. So, so the the place where the artist works is a workshop. It's a it's a profession, right? So, so that idea of, of an artist uh, in Latin America, which again takes the uh, you know the, the, the European model, um, is a profession. It's not a, a hobby like uh, it is most of the time here in the United States. So, um, so to answer your question, uh, I've always known what I wanted to do with my life. And even when you were describing the development of the sculpture, you talked about language and the idea of the title being an important part of it. How? I guess I'm assuming you're bilingual, maybe you speak more than two languages, but how does living between two cultures or speaking languages where things don't always translate perfectly, how does that impact your work? Um, I have, I've dealt with um, 
the language uh, in a variety of ways. Uh, I've, I've, I've dealt with, uh, literally with the language in, in, a, in a few pieces that I've made through the years. Um, play of words, things like that. Things that may mean one thing in one language may mean something entirely different in another. Um, so since I, you know, um, I live in these two worlds, uh, the Latin American world, the Spanish speaking world, and, and here in the, in the US, um, I am forced to do both constantly. Uh, it's very much part of uh, who I am. I try to maintain my Spanish, my Chilean roots as, uh, as much as I can. I try to read and, uh, in Spanish and try to watch TV in Spanish, you know, as, as much as I do in English. Uh, my training uh, was in English, uh, artistically, historically. Um, so there are a variety of words that I'm not familiar with in Spanish, you know, when it, when it deals with uh, the things that I've made or the things that I studied, uh, I don't know, techniques, methods, you know, things like that because of the training was done here in the U.S. Um, but I think there is a um, constant um, revisiting to to the roots, you know. Um, and it, it, it's also a nice conversation that I like to have with both the Latin American world, the Chilean world, and the, uh, you know, the Midwestern world. Um, so that's always in, my, you know, in, in mind when I create things, you know, this... this you know, back and forth and uh, how maybe it relates to one or the other, much like natural versus synthetic materials. You know, I think it's a good comparison, you know, between the two. Try to make it, try to make it work. So you're going to be doing some work with the after school program of Goodhue County Hispanic Outreach this fall. What's some advice that you would give to an aspiring artist? Um, my best piece of advice is to be curious. Be curious, be resourceful being resourceful is very important um you know inform yourself educate yourself you can do all kinds of things through the internet um you know you can do all kinds of things on your own that are not terribly expensive or extensive uh, you don't need a, a giant space to create uh, you know beautiful work um so um i would say just be curious and Keep at it, keep pushing, you know? Pushing, it's very, very important. The Sculpture Garden at the Anderson Center is free and open to the public every day of the year during daylight hours. Come visit.